Okay, welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion of immunoglobulin uh, receptor uh, generation. Uh, we're going to switch our attention now to the heavy chain of the immunoglobulin. So we spent a lot of time talking about how do we make all the different possible variable regions of the of the antibody or the immunoglobulin. Uh, but remember that uh, the variable region is not enough. We also have a constant region that needs to be made. Um, and the constant region in particular, the constant region of the heavy chain is going to determine ultimately the effector function of the immunoglobulin molecule. So what are some of the genetics that determine which type of constant heavy region uh, we use for an individual um, immunoglobulin? Well, remember that there are five classes of immunoglobulins, IgM, IgD, IgG, IgE, IgA, um, and that the class of the immunoglobulin is determined by the isotype of the constant heavy region of the antibody. So which type of heavy chain do we have? So remember that they're represented by Greek symbols. So mu goes with IgM, delta goes with IgD, and etc. I mean, as you can see here, though, that um, there's actually um, a little bit more uh, uh, diversity here than we previously uh, saw. So there are actually multiple subtypes of IgG. So um, uh, we have gamma-3, gamma-1, gamma-2b, and gamma-2a. They're a little bit out of order in the genome here of the mouse. Um, but these are ultimately going to encode what we would call IgG1, IgG2, etc. that matches the number of the, of the heavy chain um, uh, isotype. Um, you can see that uh, these things are mostly conserved between mouse, mice and humans. Um, there are some differences. For example, humans have alpha-1 and alpha-2 subtypes, whereas mice only have a single alpha. Um, humans also have um, a pseudogene uh, epsilon, encoding an epsilon, so uh, we have an, uh, an epsilon that, that doesn't work, so we don't use it, um, but we, we have a different functional epsilon downstream. Um, but overall, um, what I want to focus on here is that just like when we're making the variable region of the um, of the immunoglobulin molecule, um, we also have discrete gene segments which encode the different options for the constant heavy region. Now, you know, once again, the constant heavy region isn't determining antigen binding, but it is determining ultimately the FC portion of the immunoglobulin, which is going to be important for its effector function. Um, so one of the things that I want to point out here is that naive B cells um, start their lives expressing IgM and IgD. Um, and this is not super surprising because mu and delta are closest to the variable region in the genome. So they're immediately downstream of the J segments in the heavy chain locus. Um, so mu and delta, um, we start by being able to express either of those. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, but in order to express gamma, epsilon or alpha, um, we first have to see antigen. The B cell needs to be exposed to antigen, and at that point it switches to the other isotypes through a recombination event. Um, so uh, this is very important to remember. If, um, if you have a, a B cell, if you isolated it from a patient or something, a population of B cells, and you only saw IgM or IgD, you would know that you had naive B cells. Um, if you see IgG, IgA, or IgE, those are B cells that have seen their antigen before, and we can tell that um, from the isotypes that they're expressing. So, um, you know, one of the reasons that this matters, why we care at all, what kind of heavy chain that the antibody has or the B cell receptor has, um, in particular for antibodies, is because the FC portion of the antibody is what interacts with those other immune cells and what um, uh, is able to activate their various functions. And so, you know, we, we saw a version of this before. This has a little bit more detail. Again, not to be memorized in, in extreme detail, but you can see here that um, now with all of our different subtypes of human immunoglobulins, um, you know, they have various different concentrations in the serum, different molecular weights, and so on. Um, and you can see that different immunoglobulin classes are specialized for certain functions. So, for example, IgG and IgM are very good at activating the classical complement pathway, in particular IgM. Um, whereas uh, the other isotypes like IgA, D, and E, they don't tend to activate uh, classical complements. So they don't tend to fix C1Q, for example. Um, you can see that IgG is unique in that it uh, is capable of placental transfer, whereas the other isotypes, they don't tend to. Um, 
IgE, as we've seen, it seems like its major purpose is just to activate uh, granulocytes that contain histamine, like basophils and mast cells. And so IgE is, is a highly, highly specialized subtype. And so um, a future uh, module in the course that's very focused on B-cell immunity and the activation of B-cells is going to cover, um, you know, the signals that determine which of the isotypes we switch to um, and, you know, a lot more detail about what they do in, in various different situations in the immune response. Um, um, but again, you know, the point here is that it does matter which one we use um, because uh, it, it really influences what the immunoglobulin molecule is capable of. Um, but as I said, we, you know, we need all of the different classes of antibodies, but naive B cells don't make them all. They start by either, uh, well, not either, they express both IgM and IgD. So, you know, this is a little bit different from the antigen recognition part of the immunoglobulin. There I said they had to pick one V, one D, and one J, and then that's what they have for life. They only recognize one antigen. How is it that the, that the B cell is able to express both IgM and IgD versions of the same immunoglobulin at the same time? Well, the answer to that is that the decision to express either IgM or IgD comes down to differential splicing of the mRNA. So it's not a recombination event in the DNA, which is a permanent change. Um, it's a it's a simply a modification of the mRNA molecule, um, which, remember, mRNA, we can make lots of it. So we can decide um, on the mRNA level um, to make this switch. And so for that reason, we maintain the information for both isotypes within the germline DNA. So we can always go back and make one or the other. So if you can see this here. If we want to express IgM, um, we start with our DNA. We have our, you know, the variable region of the immunoglobulin encoded by VD and J. Downstream of that, we have the exons that encode uh, constant mu and the exons that encode constant delta. And we actually just make a super long RNA molecule. We just read all of this right off the DNA and make an RNA molecule that contains all of the exons for both mu and delta. And so then if we want to make IgM, when we splice this, uh, we just cut out all of the exons that encode for delta. We keep all the ones that encode for mu. And so what's actually translated then is an IgM. It only contains the constant mu regions. Um, in contrast, um, if we want to make IgD, we take that really, really long transcript and we, uh, when we splice it, we cut out all of the mu regions and we keep all the deltas and now we have IgD. So uh, a, a, B cell, a naive B cell is going to have both IgM and IgD on its surface um, because we can just differentially splice all of the different transcripts that we're making. And again, um, that is not a, a permanent change to the DNA. Um, it's, a, it's a choice that can be made at the RNA level. And so we always maintain the ability to express both isotypes as long as the, the B cell hasn't yet seen antigen. Um, this is reminiscent of the way that the B cell decides whether um, to make B cell receptors or to make antibodies, and, of, and B cells do both, right? Um, so that also happens through the process of differential splicing, and we saw this a little bit before, um, but this is here kind of uh, in, in a more analogous uh, to what we saw with VDJ uh, recombination. Um, so we start with the rearranged DNA. So now VDJ has been recombined. So now we know how we got the antigen binding portion of the antibody or the immune or the receptor. Um, but here, you know, the, the delta region is not shown. So this is one where we've decided to make it IgM. Um, but uh, we have um, the exons that encode the different, you know, parts of the heavy chain. Um, and so remember that, you know, we'll, there, there are multiple parts to it, both in the FAB and the FC region of the, of the immunoglobulin. Um, but um, besides the, the exons that specifically make up the heavy chain, there are additional signaling elements or targeting elements that are coded in the gene that are ultimately going to determine what the carboxy, the C-terminus of the immunoglobulin molecule looks like. And so again, we just splice the one that we want onto the end of the mRNA molecule. And once it's translated, it's going to then be targeted either to the cell membrane or to uh, or for secretion through the secretory apparatus. And so um, if we splice in the exons that encode our carboxy terminus, which you know have a hydrophobic anchor and the things that we would need to stick it into the membrane, um, 
then that's where it's going to be. Versus um, if we splice the exon, if we only keep the exon that encodes some sort of hydrophilic domain, which targets it for secretion, um, then we're going to end up with a secreted antibody. And so, again, this process is also not permanent because it's not recombination of the germline DNA. We keep all of the elements within the DNA itself. We choose at the level of splicing, once we already have made RNA, which one to keep and which one to get rid of. And so we can get rid of RNA all day, that's fine, because we can always make more. Um, so again, this is a process that can happen at the same time. So B cell receptors can both have, or B cells can have receptors, and they can also make antibody at the same time through the process of splicing from um, only one G, uh, you know, recombined gene that uh, after VDJ recombination. Okay, so, but, so this is, you know, only for IgM and IgD. As I said, once a B cell sees its antigen, usually it switches to a new isotype, and that process is permanent. Um, and so the reason that the class switching is permanent um, is because that actually does require recombination of the germline DNA. So, you know, we have our VDJ, um, and in a naive B cell, we either make IgM or IgD at the, or, you know, at the same time, as I've said, um, because mu and delta are immediately downstream of the VDJ. That's what makes this possible. However, if we want to start making IgG or E or A, we can't make an RNA long enough to rely, to rely on splicing alone to, uh, to determine which isotype we're expressing. So if we want to switch to one of these um, heavy chains that are farther downstream in the genome, we're going to need to cut out the intervening DNA so that we bring uh, the heavy chain that we want to express closer to, uh, to the VDJ segment that we've made. And so this happens very similar to the way it does when we recombine the VDJ segments. We, you know, once we've decided which ones we want, and there's a lot of molecular regulation that goes into that, um, we really just get rid of all of the intervening segments. And so if we're going to switch, and now this B cell is going to make uh, uh, gamma 1, so it's going to make IgG1. Um, so it's going to use the gamma 1 heavy chain segment. So it's going to cut out everything upstream of that, in this case, mu, delta, and gamma 3. Um, that's going to be, you know, taken care of. Now it's extra DNA. We don't want it. Um, but now gamma-1 is now immediately downstream of VDJ. And so when we make mRNA, we can include it in the transcript. Um, and ultimately, it's going to be translated into an IgG1 immunoglobulin molecule. Um, but because this was a DNA recombination event, the germline DNA has changed now. We can never go back and make IgM and IgD. So, you know, this is a step off the cliff, if you will, for, for the B cell. It's, it's going to change it forever. Um, um, so it is possible to switch to other um, isotypes as long as they're downstream of the one where we are because we still maintain them. But any DNA that's been cut out, we can't ever go back and, and switch back to the isotypes of, of genes that, that we've lost because of the recombination event during class switch recombination. Okay, so let's summarize uh, this, this discussion of immunoglobulin uh, constant heavy domains and how we incorporate them into the immunoglobulin. So Ig constant heavy chain segments, they are also encro encoded by discrete gene segments, just like we saw for the variable part. Um, differential splicing determines which constant heavy segment um, are added to the rec recombined VDJ segment. And so um, remember that um, constant heavy segments don't promote antigen binding, so they don't influence the diversity of the repertoire, but they are important because they determine antibody effector function. Um, naive B cells, as I said, express both IgM and IgD during homeostasis. Um, so this is possible because mu and delta CH segments are immediately adjacent. They're immediately downstream of the recombined VDJ portion. Um, one long transcript is made that contains the information for both mu and delta. And then differential splicing determines which we keep and which we get rid of on each individual mRNA molecule. Um, similarly, the C-terminus is differentially spliced to determine whether or not we're going to make an IgM or an IgD B cell receptor or a secreted antibody. Um, this is in contrast to class switch recombination, which does not rely on splicing, but instead is an actual recombination event of the germline DNA. So once a B cell has seen its antigen, it decides to switch to IgG or E or A, um, it's going to perform a permanent alteration to the DNA, which is going to remove all of the intervening gene segments 
um, uh, down to the segment that it wants to now start expressing. Um, but this only happens after um, a, a either an IgM or an IgD B cell receptor has been activated. So only after naive B cell receptor activation happens does this permanent change to the DNA happen, allowing uh, class switching to the other isotypes of immunoglobulins. Okay, so that's enough for immunoglobulins. Uh, we're going to finish this module with one more lecture uh, where we're going to look at these processes as they happen in T cells. A lot of it is very similar, uh, but we'll look at some things that are unique about it, uh, specifically within T cells, in the next lecture. See you then.